Let's take a look at a question where a bond is issued at a discount and then at a premium. On January 1st, 2020, Quinton Corporation issued $600,000 of 7% bonds that are due in 10 years. The bonds were issued for $55,229 and pay interest each July 1st and January 1st. The company uses the effective interest method. The market interest rate is 8%. And then we're asked to prepare a journal entry for the issuance, the July 1st interest payment, and the December 31st adjusting entry. So let's just take a look here. So the bonds have a face value of 600,000, but we issued them for 559,000. So you can see we got less than the face value of the bonds. So we issued them at a discount. Now, why would we do that? Because these bonds pay interest at 7%, but the market rate is 8%. So the investors are saying, listen, I need to make 8% on this bond. Your bond only makes 7%. So I'll only give you 55,000, 559,000 for it. And we'll give you 600,000 because they need an effective yield of 8%. That's why we issued those bonds at a discount. Okay, so the first entry that we're asked to do is to record the issuance for the January, record the journal entry for the January 1st issuance. So let's go January 1st, 2020 issuance. And we know we're gonna get debit cash and we're gonna go credit bond payable because we need to, the company's recording cash. That's the whole reason that they issued these bonds. And they know that they have to set up a liability on their statement of financial position because at maturity, they will owe that, the face value of those bonds back to the investors. Now, initially, when we have a bond at a premium or a discount, it goes onto our statement of financial position at whatever the cash inflow was. And then over the term of the bond, where we need to bring whatever that value is that we initially set up as a liability, we need to bring it either up in the case of a discount or down in the case of a premium to the face value of the bond. So when the bond matures, we have it on our statement of financial position at exactly the face value. So we're only at January 1st, 2020 here. This is the date we issued the bond. And we know we got $559,229 for it. So that is our journal entry to record the issuance. So now we've done this. Next, it says prepare the company's journal entry for the July 1st interest payment. So the bonds pay interest July 1st and January 1st. Okay, so it also says that the company is using the effective interest method here. So the company is either reporting under IFRS or perhaps they elected to use the effective interest method under ASPE. So let's set up a quick discount amortization table here. So we're gonna have the date of each of the payments we're gonna have the cash paid. And I like to write out what that's gonna be, which is gonna be the face value times the stated rate. So that's exactly what the bondholders expect to get. Then we're gonna have the interest expense. And this is going to be the carrying value of the bonds times the market rate. Then we're gonna have the discount amortized. Amortized, and then we're gonna have the carrying value. So the first date that we have to put into this table is January 1st, 2020. We don't have any cash paid or interest expense or amortization of the discount. We simply have the carrying value, which we know from our entry right here, which was 559. Two two nine. So that's the initial carrying value of this bond payable right here. This is exactly what we're recording. That's the carrying value of the liability. Okay, so the next thing that we need is the July 1st, 2020 interest payment. So we know, let's figure out the cash paid. So we know the face value of this bond is going to be 600,000 times and what was the stated rate? Let's take a look. So the stated rate is 7%. Um, 7%. And then we've got, okay. And then we're going to adjust that for the fact that it's half 
it's semi-annually, so we're going to multiply it by 6 over 12. So then we know that our interest, the cash that the investors are going to need to get twice a year is 21,000. So this number here is going to be 21,000. It's simply the amount we owe to the bondholders based on what's printed on the actual bond certificate. The face value of the bond, which is 600,000, times the stated rate on the bond certificate, which is 7%. And then it's really important that we remember to adjust it if it's semi-annually. We also saw a question earlier where the payment was quarterly. So in that case, we needed to use 3 over 12 here. Um, and that we're using the right period of interest because the interest rates that we're given are always annual rates. All right, now let's look at the interest expense. So the interest expense is going to be the carrying value of the bond. So we've got 559229 here times the, in, the market interest rate. So let's take a look up at the question. It says the market interest rate is 8%. So we're going to have it as times 8% and also times six over 12, because we're dealing with the same period here. So that is gonna give us 22,369. So that's the number we're gonna put here, 22,369. And the discount amortized is simply gonna be the difference between these two numbers. So if we just subtract the difference, we're gonna get 1,369. And then to get the new carrying value, we simply need to either add or subtract the number, the change in the discount or the premium. And the easiest way that I think to figure out if we're adding or subtracting is to simply think about what are we trying to do to the carrying value. So right now the carrying value is below the face value of these bonds. The face value is 600,000 and we've got them on our statement of financial position at only 559,000. So we clearly need to be increasing the value of the liability over time to be getting closer to our 600,000. So I know that I'm gonna be adding that discount amortization to the carrying value to bring it up. So if I add 1369, I'm gonna have 560, 598 is gonna be my new carrying value. All right, so that gives me all the entries that I need for that payment. So let's record that, let's go debit, so we know we're gonna have debit interest expense, and this is gonna go through our income statement. We should label this actually. So this is our July 1st, 2020 interest payment. So we're gonna have interest expense. We're gonna have cash. And then we know we're gonna be changing the value of the bond payable. So we're increasing it or decreasing it. Sorry, that got messed up there. So we're gonna be increasing the value of the liability. So we're gonna go credit bond payable because we need to be increasing that amount just like we added it to the carrying value. So our interest expense is gonna be right here, right from this table, 22,369. I should say interest expense, 22,369. The cash that the bondholders need to receive is right here. 21,000 and our amortization of the discount is going to be 1369 and you can see that entry bounces nicely. Okay so let's take a look up here. This thing is not cooperating with me today. Okay let's take a look up here in the question. <clears throat> okay here we go, here we go. Okay, so we did this one. We did the July 1st interest payment, and then now it wants us to do the December 31st adjusting entry. So let's just change our color here just so we can see what we're doing because we've got quite a few things going on in this question. Okay, so now we're going to do this December 31st adjusting entry. So let's go back down to our amortization table, which is right here. So we're going to have the December 31st adjusting entry here. So the interest payment is gonna be the same, it's still gonna be the 21,000, but our carrying value of this bond has changed now. So our carrying value is this, so we're gonna have 560, 598 as this carrying value times our market rate, which is still 8% times six over 12. So that is gonna give us a market rate of 22, or sorry, interest expense of 22,424. 
So let's put that in here, 22 for 24. And then our discount is amortization, simply going to be the difference of those two amounts. So we're going to have it as 1424. OK, so we know now what our, what our numbers are for our entry. So our December 31st adjusting entry is going to be debit interest expense, just like we did in the July payment above, credit cash, and cre actually credit bond payable because we're still going to need to bring up the value of that liability. But this is actually not correct. It's not going to be credit cash because the payment isn't due until January 1st. So we're actually going to credit interest payable here because the cash is actually going to be remitted the next day. So they've, record, we've, they've earned the whole amount. So we're still going to record this 21,000 here. But and our discount amortization from our table right here is going to be 1424. 1424. And then our interest expense, which is also from our table, is going to be this 22424. And there you have our adjusting entry. So again, the difference here is this interest payable versus cash, because the cash is not going to be remitted on December 31st. We're simply accruing the portion of the bond interest that's been earned in the calendar year. And it just so happens that this payment is due on July 1st or January 1st, I'm sorry, so the very next day. So the entire amount has been earned. It, there could be situations where you would need to say, if only half of this amount has been earned, maybe you'd have to prorate that. But in this case, it's just one day. So the entire amount has been earned, but the cash isn't actually going to flow out until the next day. So we're going to record it to an interest payable liability on our balance sheet, which of course is a short term liability. It's going to be due the next day. So that takes us through uh, part one of this question. All right, let's take a look at part two. So part two assumes that the bonds were issued. It says part two, it's now assume that the bonds were issued for $644,632 and the effective interest rate was 6%. Prepare the journal, same journal entries as for part one. Okay, so we're still using the effective interest method here. So let's just change our color. So now we've got bond issued at a premium because you can see that the value of the bonds is actually higher now. So the bonds are still 600,000, but now we're gonna get 644,000. So we're getting more than the face value of the bonds. So now let's look at how we would amortize a premium. So we're gonna set up the same schedule that we had before. So we're gonna have date, we're going to have cash paid, which is going to be the face value times the stated rate. Then we're going to have the interest expense, which is the carrying value times the market rate. Then we're going to have the premium amortized, and we're going to have the carrying value. So on January 1st, 2020, when the bonds are issued, we don't have anything to record here, but we know straight from the question what we received. So we received, <clears throat> see if I can get this to cooperate with me here. <clears throat> we received 644,000. Okay. Okay. So we received 644,000. $632, okay? So then for July 1st and December 31st, those are the two entries that we need. So for July 1st, the cash paid is gonna be exactly the same as what we calculated before. Nothing on the actual coup, the actual bond uh, coupon itself or the bond certificate itself has changed. So the, per the investors are still gonna expect to receive 21,000 per year or per quarter or twice a year, sorry, I should say, semi-annually. And then the interest expense is going to be the carrying value, which is going to be 644, 632 times the market rate, which we're told now is 6% times 6 over 12, 
which is going to give us 19339. We're going to put that in here. And the difference between the two is going to give us 1661, which means, and so now let's think about this carrying value. So are we going to be adding or subtracting that from the carrying value? Well, we know we have the liability on our, on our statement of financial position now higher than the face value. We need this bond on our statement of financial position at $600,000 at maturity. So we need to be bringing it down. So we're going to subtract the premium amortization from the carrying value. So our new carrying value then is going to be 642971. And if we do that calculation again, 642971 times 6% times 6 over 12, we'll get our next entry, which is here, 19289. So our premium amortization is going to be 1711 for December. So now let's make our two entries. So we're going to have debit interest expense. We're going to be debiting the bond payable because we're bringing it down now. So it's the opposite of the liability. We're pulling down the value of it. And then we're going to be crediting cash. So we've got our interest expense here. We know this is 19339 for July 1st. Our bond payable, we're pulling it down by 1661. And our cash that we're going to be paying to the investors is 21,000. And our adjusting entry for December is going to be, I'll just squish this in here. It's going to be debit interest expense. It's going to be debit bond payable. And then do you think our credit's going to be to cash or is it going to be to an interest payable? It's going to be to an interest payable because this is our December 31st entry. And this was July 1st. It's pretty messy. Um, and because the interest is actually going to flow the next day. So we're not going to actually be paying out cash from our bank account. So, and this entry is simply these numbers from the table here. So this is always going to be this 21,000. The interest expense is here, 19,289. And the decrease to the bond payable for December 31st is 1711. So it's important to remember that when you're using the effective interest method, although the coupon payment on your bond stays consistent, your interest expense changes because your effective yield will change, which will also change the timing of your premium amortization. So let's take a look up at the question. And we prepared all the journal entries again. So that concludes this question.